Can you briefly explain to to us what ketosis is and what the difference is between being fat adapted and being in ketosis? Right. Yeah. Basically, ketones are a means by which your liver is able to quickly supply energetic substrates to your bloodstream. And it happens when your blood glucose level drops below your homeostatic set point. Ketones are almost like a second messenger hormone-like process that gives your body an indication, an idea of the energetic state of your body at that time. And ketones play many different roles in terms of how they affect the body, but the primary route of use of ketones in the body is that ketones can be used directly as oxidative substrate for the mitochondria from which you can produce ATP to do cellular work in short. So what happens is your liver, which has a supply of fatty acid molecules stored there, gets a message by way of the blood glucose is dropping. So we better ramp up this process of ketogenesis. Then what the liver does is enzymatically cleaves the, what are called acetyl units off the ends of the free fatty acid chains. It's the same thing as what your body does when you're undergoing beta oxidation to provide substrate for the TCA cycle, et cetera, in the mitochondria. Except that instead of joining an acetyl unit with a coenzyme A unit, what we're actually doing is we're lumping a couple of acetyl units together. Beta hydroxybutyrate, basically, a ketone body. That ketone body floats around in the blood, and while ever it's in the blood, it gives various tissues of your body messages about what the energetic state of your body is. And then when those ketones reach the tissues that need energy, specifically in the form of glucose that they can't currently get enough of because your blood glucose has dropped a bit, they will enter those tissues and serve that role. They will provide an energy buffer to keep you working. So that's basically the process of ketogenesis. It's both a messenger system, but also it's an energetic buffer so that you don't die when your blood glucose drops below a certain level. Commensurate with the production of ketones, your, your body will also ramp up its process of gluconeogenesis as well to bring, again, to bring your blood glucose back to its homeostatic set point. Homeostatic, by the way, just means where your body wants it to be ideally. So that's what ketogenesis is, the production of or the, or the rapid delivery of energetic substrates to the various tissues of the body that might need it at various times. So your body can ramp up and down its production of ketones at any given tick of the clock, pretty much. And not only can do that, but does do that. It responds to need at the time. 25% of every beat of your heart, the volume of that blood, 25% of that goes through your kidneys every single time your, your heart beats because your kidneys need to filter your blood. One of the things that the kidneys will do is filter ketones out of the blood into the urine according to their concentration gradient. Wherein those, those ketones will be stored in that bladder until you avoid that bladder. And only then, when you pee on that stick, does that stick show what the ketones were in that urine or when it entered that bladder at that time? Does it tell you anything about your ketogenic state right now? No. Does it tell you anything about your ketogenic state over the last 12 hours? Not really, no, because there are other things that can draw ketones out of your blood. For example, muscular exercise, 
which would have your urine with a zero ketone reading, despite the fact that you might have actually been in quite significant ketosis. Hence why I say testing your ketones in your urine, complete waste of time. So a lot of people say, oh, well, test it in your blood then. Great. That'll only tell you what the level of ketones in your blood is right now. So it won't actually give you any useful information going forward. Okay, you can take a series of right now tests and go, so on average, it seems like I'm in ketosis to some level most of the time. Great. But I, sp I suppose your next question is going to be about around, well, so what? In which case the answer is, well, so what? So nothing, actually. It's a normal, natural, perfectly indicated part of human physiology. It's one of the ways that the body maintains its homeostasis, having everything in the set point that it wants to be in. And whether it's high, low, or intermediate on any given test or in any series of tests either is not really here nor there in terms of utility of information. There is a theological group of individuals, keto nuts, who run around on the interweb saying, actually, ketogenic diets are great. And the idea of a ketogenic diet is to be in ketosis and to have ketones and to test your ketones to make sure that it's working. No. No, that's not the purpose of a ketogenic diet at all. The purpose of a ketogenic diet is usually to encourage a person to be in a metabolic state where they would be using fat for energy rather than storing it. To lose body fat. The most common reason a person will undertake a ketogenic diet is because they feel too fat and they want to be less fat. And it's very effective for fat loss. But that's got nothing to do with the ketones. Okay, there are those who say, ketones are great because they're anti-inflammatory. They may or may not be. I'm not convinced. There are people that, that are saying there are all sorts of intangible benefits purely in having ketones at a high level. Again, not convinced at all. And in fact, when we look at the one population of modern humans that we know about anywhere in the world that, that do typically undertake a diet which would lead them to be in ketosis quite often, those individuals have universally experienced a complete genetic um, drift, some evolution, which leads those people to be less able to produce ketones. And I'm talking about the Inuit. Yeah, I figured. So there's a reason why it might not be such a good thing to have a high level of ketones in your blood at all times. And it turns out that there is good reasons why you should not be in ketosis all the time, stay in ketosis all the time, and have a high level of ketones in your blood all the time. Okay. So let's let's pause let's pause on that that yep. there because I've I've actually said that many times about about being in ketosis long term mm. and and all those things. So before before we get into that rabbit hole, mm -hmm. um, can you be fat adapted without being in ketosis? Yes, absolutely. You bet. Every time you eat a meal, let's assume that meal is sensibly formulated and put together. Let's say that meal consists of the right amount of protein and the right amount of fat for you for a day's nutrition, your one meal a day, which is what we're all aspiring to. That one meal will necessarily kick you out of ketosis for four to six hours. And then you'll spend 18 to 20 hours on a one meal a day program in ketosis. However, six, eight hours after you've eaten your one meal a day, if you go and do a, either a blood or urine test on your ketosis, on your ketones, you'll probably find it's near zero. Mm -hmm. And yet you've consumed no carbohydrates for weeks, months, and years in, in some cases. 
So yes, being being fat adapted is really just another way of saying your body is now optimized for running on the fuel that it's actually designed to run on, which is fat. You're getting all the protein you need to maintain your body structures, plus a little bit extra for a little bit of gluconeogenic effect to give you that insulin spike that you need every day to keep your thyroid function and your kidney function as it should be. But you could be on a fully 100% carnivorous diet with ostensibly no carbohydrate intake to speak of at all for weeks, months, and years and never ever show any sign of pinkness on a pea stick. Yes. I shouldn't have led with pea stick. Okay, so. Works for me. So, because I've gotten a lot of comments um, so I do want to get your take on, on the ketosis bit, because I've gotten a lot of comments and this is why I wanted to talk to you about that. So when you commented on my IG post, that was perfect timing. So I've gotten a lot of comments, like, isn't the goal supposed to be ketosis? Um, and, and I get that quite a bit. So I guess question one would <laughs> be why, why do you think the goal, um, should not be measuring ketones being quote unquote ketosis. Right. Well, it's really for the reasons that I've been talking about today already. And that is that either a urinalysis or a blood analysis of your ketone levels will not necessarily inform you accurately on your state of ketogenesis or otherwise. Because either your blood or your urine, it doesn't matter which so much, the concentration of ketones that you'll find in there depends not only on how many are being put in, but also on how many are being drawn out. It's the same thing as going to the bank and saying, look, I've made $100,000 in deposits in the last 10 years. Can I withdraw $100,000, please? To which the bank teller will usually say, well, you've spent most of that already. It's gone. So, you know, your bank balance does not suggest 100000 despite the fact that you have indeed put $100,000 in, in your bank account. If you, if you get the analogy. Yeah. Taking it a step further than that, the goal, as I've said, is not to be in ketosis, is not to produce ketones, is not to have ketones. There are those saying ketones are of benefit just by being there. There are those who might want to sell you exogenous ketones because ketones are beneficial just by being. What they will actually do is discourage fat loss off your body. Because now you're producing, or you're, you're, you're adding ketones to your body, so your body doesn't have to break your fat down to produce them anymore. So that's not going to be a good idea. The goal of a ketogenic diet for a person, when they decide, I'm going to go ketogenic, is because 99 times out of 100, they do that because they, they've heard, they've read, they've seen somewhere that ketogenic diets are great for stripping body fat off you. And they are. Absolutely. But it's got nothing to do with the fact that the process by which that occurs produces ketones. Mm 